have been in a pandemic for three years. And it looks as though that there was no solution, there was no hope, but God is still our hope. Amen. God is still our strength. We may feel weak and we may feel down, we may feel abused, but God is there to help us. Amen. We have a Savior who is able to help us in a time of need. When I think of the scripture, Matthew 11, I have to really dig into the context of why Jesus said this statement. Whenever the Lord speaks, it is never by accident. When the Lord speaks, it's never by mistake. But when God speaks, it's always for a specific reason. Whenever God speaks through his word, speaks to us as his children, there is always a reason of him speaking. When we go to the book of Genesis, God gives a promise to Abraham. And when Abraham is given this promise, it's not just for him, but it's a generational promise that comes. Then as he speaks to Abraham, he also speaks to Isaac. Then he also speaks to Jacob. He also speaks to Joseph in a dream. But they realize that the promise was bigger than them. And Jesus comes as that promise after the Old Testament is closed. Jesus comes now as the fulfillment of that promise. What I've noticed is that when God gives a promise, it may feel like it is delayed, but it is not denied. When God speaks a promise, we may feel like, I want to see it, and you're trying, you're trying to feel frustrated, or you feel impatient, but God's promise is still in effect. Mm -hmm. You may be in a job you may not like, but when God gives you a promise, you can still have a smile on your face. Even when the bills are stacked up and you're trying to figure out how am I going to make my next paycheck, God still gives you a promise. Amen. Even when friends are telling you, are you sure this is possible, you still have to hold on to your promise. God gives a promise and he gives a guarantee. You ever notice how sometimes you go through life and you'll hear people give you a lot of promises, but they're never able to fulfill those promises. You ever notice how people will tell you things and you listen to them and believe them and then all of a sudden their promise is broken. But when Jesus gives us a promise, that promise speaks to our mind. That promise speaks to our heart. That promise speaks to our soul. And we never forget that promise. Jesus is now here talking to frustrated and restless people. Before this, he's having a conversation with his father. And he says, I thank you for you are the Lord of heaven and earth. When we are in times of moments where we're trying to figure things out. We have to talk to the Lord. We have to spend time in prayer and spend time talking to him and telling him what's on our heart. When we spend time with God, God is able to hear our prayers. God is able to hear our groans. God is able to hear what's on our mind. And as Jesus is here speaking to his father, he sees the people in that time being frustrated, being weighed down, feeling the pressures of life. And he gives a promise. The promise that he gives when he sees all these people under the Roman government and under the pressure of the Pharisees and the taxation and the issue that's going on, he says, come to me. All that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens. When I read that scripture, I feel like Jesus is speaking directly to me. Mm -hmm. As he's speaking directly to me, he's also speaking directly to you. 
Because Jesus here is giving an invitation. Mm -hmm. In his invitation, he says, come to me. There is difference when someone says, get over here, or they try to force you, but Jesus is inviting you. Yes, yes. And as he's inviting you, he's saying, come to me. When he says this, we understand that we are given an opportunity to come to Jesus. Mm -hmm. There is something amazing about getting invited by Jesus. There is something beautiful about receiving an invitation from the King of Kings. He is the one that's inviting you because he noticed that, yes, you're feeling weary and you're feeling burdened, but he says, come to me. As he says this, we understand that when you look at it, it says he's, when people are feeling weary, what does weariness feel like? It feels like you cannot get up again. Weariness feels like you cannot move any further. Mm -hmm. Have you felt weary before? Yes. Have yeah. you felt weary before because you felt like I'm moving, but for some reason I feel like I can't get to the next place I need to go to. Weariness feels like frustration. Where in this field is like things don't look like they're all adding up. Have you felt weary before? And then it said heavy burdens. We all have felt heavy burdens. We all have been burdened by sometimes depression. Burdened by pain in our bodies. Burdened by people, opinions. Burdened by sickness, burdened by so many things. But as you're feeling weary, as you're feeling heavy burdened, Jesus says, come to me. Oh, that's good news because, yes, I was trying to walk and trying to carry this load. And Jesus invites me to come to him. Oh, when I think of heavy burdens, I'm reminded of one, one time I had to go to the car of my mom. And I remember I had a heavy bag, and I had to carry it on my shoulder. And I remember finally when I get to her car, I felt relief to put my burden down in the car. Sometimes in life we carry so many heavy burdens. Sometimes in life we carry so many heavy things, but Jesus is able to take our burdens away from us. Jesus is able to take away our problem because all he says is, come to me. All of us have felt this weariness. All of us have felt this weariness, maybe emotionally, maybe physically, or maybe we felt this spiritually, but we all have dealt with weary moments. And then as he's feeling this, he gives an invitation. He reaches out to us to come to him. Have you ever enjoyed an invitation from someone? Maybe you've been invited to a party. Maybe you've been invited to someone's home. Maybe you've been invited to a restaurant. Or maybe you are invited to somewhere, but you enjoy Invitations. How about you? I know I'm not the only yeah, one yeah. that enjoy invitation when someone invites you in. Mm -hmm. But when Jesus gives this invitation, it's more than just something that is easy. But when he invites you in, you have access to so much. When Jesus invites you in, you begin to feel this joy in your heart. God gives an invitation. He says, come to me, all of you. Who is that all of you? He's talking to all of us. All of us are invited to come to Jesus. All of us are invited to be in his presence. All of us are invited to be in his power. All of us are invited to be close to him. There is nothing greater than being with the Lord. There is nothing greater than being in the presence of God. 
I know that we have many places and we have many different famous places, but the greatest place that you can be in is in the presence of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Because when I'm in the presence of the Lord, I find great safety. When I'm in the presence of the Lord, I find strength. When I'm in the presence of the Lord, I find rest and I find rejuvenation. I find reviving. I find help. I find strength. When I'm in the presence of the Lord, I feel something that I've never felt before. When I'm in the presence of God, tears begin to run down my face. Not because I'm sad, but when I'm in the presence of the Lord, when I feel his presence, I can't take it. My soul is happy. When I get in the presence of God, I don't have to look to who's next to me or who's behind me. But all I know is that I look to him. When I'm in the presence of God, I don't worry about who's there and who's not there. When I'm in the presence of God, it's all about him. You see, I'm reminded by Isaiah 6 when he said, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. You see, we have to look at God not like he's just a regular person, but he's high and lifted up. When was the last time you had was at the edge of your seat and said, God, I'm looking to you. I'm looking to you not for my own thing, but I'm looking to you because when I'm in your presence, something begins to happen. Have you ever noticed that when you're in the presence of God, you feel this joy in your heart. When you're in the presence of God, you begin to feel much lighter. Am I, am I, am I by here by myself? Because when I'm in the presence of God, I know that my life will begin right. to be different. Amen. When I'm in the presence of God, I don't worry about gossip. When I'm in the presence of God, I don't worry about what they're saying on the news. But the good news is that you're in the presence of God. Of the Lord. Amen. And as you're in the presence of God, you have to look to him and say, Lord, I'm available to you. Amen. When you're in the presence of God, you say, Lord, I am looking to you. I'm not looking for you to find a solution, but Lord, I know that you are my solution. Amen. I know that you are more than what people say. I know that when I read your word, I know for myself that I have a faith in a God who is well alive. I have a faith to know that yes, things make me look fearful, but when I walk in faith, I know that you are able to do something amazing. Amen. What is faith? Faith is knowing that yes, I know things may not look one way, but faith is still saying, God, you are still able. Amen. Faith is to know that yes, people may say one thing, but faith is knowing that I still see light at the end of the tunnel. Amen. Yes, darkness may come and danger may come Amen. and trouble may come, but I still have faith. Amen. Faith is knowing that yes, you go to the doctor, they tell you a report, you say, okay, I understand. But fear will say, I'm sad and I'm sick. But faith will say, and he shall heal me. Amen. Fear says, yes, things are not adding up. But then faith says, and my God shall supply Amen. all of my needs. Amen. My needs will be met. Why? Amen. Because God will provide. Amen. That's what Psalms 23 Amen. says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. We don't have to want for anything. Why? Because he is our shepherd. Amen. He is the one that provides for us. He is the one that guides us. He is the one that gives us what we need. And then verse 29 says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. When we look at it, it says, take my yoke. Now, when we look at this from the Bible context, when he says, take my yoke, a yoke was something that connects people together mm -hmm. as they were working together. Mm -hmm. When we say yoke, he was talking about an animal that was connected to its owner as it was working together mm -hmm. with that owner. When we look at yoke, when he says, take my yoke upon 
upon you and learn from me. That is discipleship. Yes. What is discipleship? Discipleship means I am a follower of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I am a connector yes. to Jesus. Yes. I am a student of him and yes. learning from him. Mm -hmm. When we go to Matthew, in the beginning of Matthew, Jesus sees Matthew at the lake of Genesaree. And he says to him, follow me. What does that mean? That means that when Jesus says, follow me, that means you drop whatever is in your hands and follow him. When Jesus says, follow me, let the book says, he says, follow me. He does not say like the Buddhists, follow my teachings. He does not say like other religions, follow these guidelines or strolls. But he says, Follow me. As he says, follow me, what does that mean? That means you make a decision in your mind to let go of what was before to go to where what is about to happen. When you follow Jesus, you have to let go of what was in your hands. The problem of our society is that people want things and then they want Jesus. People want the world and they also want Jesus. But the Bible says you cannot serve to masters. Yes. I know that doesn't sound very popular today, but we have to serve the Lord. No yes. matter what's going on in life, I still have made a decision in my mind to follow Jesus. As we follow him, we understand that God is right there next to us. As we're following him, the world may say follow this, or the world may say follow that, but when I follow Jesus, I know that there is a power, there is a strength that comes when I'm connected to him. And it says, take my yoke and learn from me. We have to learn from the Lord. We have to learn from him. He gives us wisdom. He gives us things that we've never heard before. He gives us things that we've never seen before. We have to realize that God is the one that we learn from. He is our teacher. Because when it says, take my yoke and learn from me, that means that Jesus is not only our inviter, but he's also our teacher. Jesus, when he teaches, the lessons never leave our mind. When Jesus teaches us, the lessons never leave our heart. We have to make a decision to follow and learn from Jesus. When we read his word, we learn so much about him. Whenever someone tells me, the Lord didn't speak to me, I said, did you read your word? Because when I read his word, I learn so much about him. When I read the Gospels, I know about more about Jesus. When I read the Psalms, I know more about Jesus. When I read Proverbs, I know more about Jesus. When I told somebody I heard a professor say, he said, the Bible is a hymn book. He said, H-I-M, it's all about him. It's about him. He is the one and that is the focus. When we come to the Word of God, we find so much wisdom. We don't have to look for philosophers or psychologists or counselors. But when we study the word of God, there is so much in the word of God that we can learn from. It says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. And then it said, for I am gentle and humble in heart. When we look at Jesus, he gives a gentle invitation. When we look at Jesus, he never forces anyone to do what he wants. But we have to be willing to listen to Jesus. We have to be willing to accept what he is offering. How do we accept what Jesus is offering? We accept it by accepting him as Lord and Savior. We cannot walk around and say we love Jesus, but we don't want to commit to Jesus. We can't say we love Jesus and we still want the world. We can't have one foot in the world and then one foot in Christ. We have to make a decision to say, Lord, I'm dedicated to you. I love you. The question I have for you this morning is, do you love Jesus? Do you not just love you, but do you want to accept him as Lord and Savior? Yes. It's more than just wearing a t-shirt saying, I love Jesus. But are you committed to Jesus? Are you committed to being a Christian? 
Are you committed to reading your word? Are you committed to reading your Bible? Are you committed to praying? Not just praying when things are bad, but praying every single day. We have to realize that we have to make a decision. How do we find rest for our souls? That is in Jesus Christ. When we make the decision to follow God, he will give us what we need. This is helping someone right now. Because what I've noticed is that when I spend time with God, he gives me my eyes something I've never seen before. Mm -hmm. You may be looking at your situation right now and seeing all negativity. But all you need is job to focus your mind to see the outcome and the positivity. Yeah. Because you may be in a situation and think that everything is so terrible. But all you need is God to say, yes, you may see it as bad, but it's still good. You may be in a place where you say, I'm going to give up, I'm going to quit. But God is saying, if you hold on, the reward is much sweeter. Amen. We all have dealt with some sour moments, can we be honest? We all dealt with some moments where it looked so terrible. But the good news is that even I'm going through a test, even I'm going through something like this, I still have a testimony. After I've gone through all of the issues, after I've gone through all the problems, I still hold on to my promise. And then, as he said this, he said, you will find rest for your soul. I am so glad that I can have rest for my soul. Mm -hmm. Even when I'm dealing with all of the pressures of life, even when I'm dealing with all of the things, I know that God is still able. Mm -hmm. I know that people may tell you, oh, why do you go to church every Sunday? I go to church every Sunday because I know that God is still able and he's still able to do what he wants. Why do you still get on your knees and pray? Why? Because I know that God is still able. Why do you still read your word? Because I know that God is still able. Able. I know for myself that God is able. Yes, I may not have the biggest house on the hill, but God is still able. I may not have millions of dollars, but God is still able. God is able to turn your life around. I will live in witness that God can turn it around. Yes, I had tears in my eyes, but I still trusted in the Lord. Yes, I had pain in my body, but I still trusted in God. Why do you still trust in Him? Because I'm still here. Yes, people have Dying and going on, but I'm still here. People have given up and walked away, but I'm still here. Yes, I've gone through trials, but the Bible says, Count it all joy when you go through various trials. Yes, I'm going through issues, but I still have joy. Amen. Not only do we see an invitation, then when he says, Take my yoke and learn from me, that's instruction. But lastly, when we go to verse 30. He says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So we see instruction, we see invitation, we see instruction, but now we see illumination. Because it says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Why would Jesus say my yoke is easy? Well, I noticed that when I had my own issues and yokes, it kept me to go nowhere. Mm -hmm. When I tried to fix things on my own, it led me to nowhere. But when I gave it to Jesus, he says, for my yoke is easy, my burden is light. What does that mean? That means that when I connect to Jesus, things will become much better. Amen. When I connect to Jesus, I find healing when I was sick before. When I connect to Jesus, I know that I was broken, but I'm going to be blessed. When you connect to God, there is something that will begin to happen. Amen. He says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Yes, we deal with many burdens. Yes, we feel stacked up with many problems. But the good news is that God is our burden bearer. Yeah. He's the one that takes our issues that we've been trying to carry. You see, you don't have to carry your burden. God can carry your burden. Amen. You don't have to carry your issue. You can give it to God. Amen. You may say, Lord, I'm feeling depressed. But if you give the pressure to him, he'll give you some strength. Amen. You may say, Lord, I'm feeling sick. But if you take your sickness to God, 
God, he will begin to heal you. You may be saying, I'm, I'm trying to figure out about my children. If you give your children to the Lord, he will fix your children. You may be trying to figure out, what am I going to do about my job? If you give your job to him, he will give you a better job. Yes. God has the power to do the impossible for yes. you. Yes. God has the power to turn your life around. I believe in the power of God. We don't have to worry about what's going on with the news. We don't have to worry about the negativity that's going on. All we have to do is focus on God. Amen. If we focus on God, he is able to do so much for us. Mm -hmm. The reason why we're still here is because God is on our side. Right. What is your testimony? The Lord has never left me. Yes, I felt like it. But God was still right there. Mm -hmm. Even when I had tears in my eyes and I was burying family members that I loved, he still was there for me. Mm -hmm. Even when I tried to figure things out, God was still there for me. Even, even 10 years ago when I felt so much pain from betrayal, even in my home church, God was still there for me. Even mm -hmm. when I got sick 11 years ago, God was there for me. God will be there for you. Yes, he will. I want you to know. That no matter what loss you felt, there was still gaining in God. No matter what you felt like, God will give you rest. And it's not just physical, but spiritual rest. This is the spiritual rest that we need. Our souls need Jesus. Our minds need Jesus. Our heart needs Jesus. Uh, the, you know what? The world still needs Jesus. Amen. America still needs Jesus. This nation needs Jesus. God is bigger than who's ever in the White House. Yes, yes, God is bigger than any politician yes, that's in office. Yes, God is bigger than anything, any tragedy that's going on. Amen. God is able. Amen. We have to not limit God because God is unlimited. We serve a God who is unlimited. Amen. We serve a God who is able to do the impossible for us. Amen. What a mighty God be yes. Amen. Angel at bow before him. Yes. Heaven Amen. and earth adore him. What a mighty God. Do you know how mighty God is? Amen. Do you know how powerful God is? Do you know how beautiful God is? Do you know how wonderful he is? Thank you, Lord. God is able. He's able to do so much for us. He's able to turn our lives around. He's able to help us in a time of trouble. I know that God is there for us. I know that God is still even there for us. Even when all these things are happening, it's all about him. It's not about us. It's all about Jesus. It's not about our desires. It's not about our will. It's not about our wants. But it's about him. Let us focus on Jesus. Let us focus on his power. Mm -hmm. Let us focus on his authority. Let us focus on what he has for us. Amen. How do we find rest in him? Is when we come, when he says come unto me, we go to him. How do we find rest? We learn from his instruction. How do we find rest? We find rest because now he opens our eyes and tells us, for his yoke is easy mm -hmm. and his burden is light. I want everyone to know that Jesus is the focus. Jesus is the one that can do the impossible. He invites you in. Even those right now, you may be saying, I don't know what am I going to do. If God says, come to me. Amen. You don't have to think about it. Just come to him. You may feel like, well, I've been away from church for so long. God says, come to me. Even when you feel like, well, I've been in church, but I'm still not thinking, I'm not sure. Come to him. It's very simple. Come to Jesus. I remember my grandfather would say, come to Jesus, come to Jesus. Come to Jesus right now. He will save you. He will save you. Amen. God has the power to save you. Yes, he does. God has the power to bring you in. I'm a witness that God is able. We have to give everything to the Lord. Amen. We have to give him our issues. 
Give them our problem. Give them everything. And as we give it to God, God will give to you. He'll give you love like never before. He'll give you peace yes, yes, like never before. Yes. He'll give you grace like never before. You see, for some reason, no matter what's going on, no matter how old I get, I still call on Jesus. No matter what's going on, I still love the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter what people say. I know who Jesus is for myself. Do you know who Jesus is? Because when you get to know Jesus, he begins to touch you in a way that no one else can know you. Amen. And as we give to the Lord, let us take a moment to give to him and sow to him Amen. this morning. Amen. Giving is a part of worship. Giving is a part. But when we give to him, he gives to us. There are many ways to give this morning. There are many ways to give. Amen. There are many ways to give. Amen. Give by PayPal, PayPal.me, or Fire Now. Sell or by now at gmail.com. Give cash out. Give dollar sign low by now. Amen. Amen. There are many ways to give. As Jesus gives to us, we give to Jesus. Amen. Amen. being our inviter. We thank you, Lord, for being our teacher, for being the one that helps us and gives us what we need. And Lord, we know that you are able to do the impossible and the unthinkable for us. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly in front of your love, all ask of him. We thank you, Lord, for being everything to us. And we give you all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Globus who we are. Globus who we are. are. Fire is what we bring. Fire is what we bring. Ministry is what we do. Ministry is what we do. Amen. 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 Amen